I'm Mark Newberg, Director of Impact Strategies for the Stella Group Limited, and this is Scott Sklar, President of the Stella Group Limited, and we're here to answer some frequently asked questions about solar technologies. And Scott, since you're one of the country's foremost experts on solar technology, if not one of the world's foremost experts on solar technologies, let's start simple. What are the basic solar technologies available, and what are their applications? Okay, well, there are basically four. Uh, there's one called passive solar design, where the building itself, its orientation, its materials, uh, really incorporate the best of solar design to use the sun's energy to optimally heat during the, the winter and cool during the summer. Uh, the second one is solar daylighting, and this it sort of looks like a skylight, or in some cases a bubble on the roof, but it brings in full spectrum natural light without the heat. So uh, big commercial buildings like Best Buy and Walmart naturally use solar daylighting in all their buildings. And not only do they zero out their electric lighting costs during the day, even on the cloudiest days, but people buy more, about 11% more the day they do it, because they buy more under full spectrum light. And there are many studies that show that students get sick less in solar daylit schools and workers are more productive in solar daylit office buildings. The third kind of solar is solar thermal or solar water heating predominantly. And you've been in your car during the summer when the windows are rolled up. It's the same thing. The collector gets hot and transfers the heat using liquid glycol, which is fundamentally an antifreeze we use in cars and transfer it to the water tank to heat your water or to a radiant floor system to do space heating and even can be used for cooling with absorption coolers. And there are several different kinds of technology within that uh, technology uh, segment of solar thermal. And last, what most people know is photovoltaics. And this uses uh, the direct conversion of sunlight. Most people know uh, photovoltaics through solar calculators. In fact, I brought one, and it's actually the little panel on the calculator that powers directly the electronics. And of course, we use more cells on bigger panels for rooftops or on the ground for utility scale power uh, to provide electricity and sometimes we store it in batteries if we need it at night or during rainier days. Okay, so I see sort of a division here. We've got passive applications and sort of active technologies. Yes. Let's talk about the technologies first because I think those tend to be a little bit more complicated. Right. Let's say I own a building or a plot of land and I need to sort of design operations of, let's start with the building. Yeah, let's start. Buildings are better and easier for people to okay. envision. So, when would I use solar thermal and when would I use solar photovoltaics? Okay. Solar thermal, again, is heat. And so, we use heat uh, in several ways in buildings, primarily for water heating. And again, the, the heat is transferred to a liquid and the liquid, a solar pump, pumps the liquid into a coil in your water tank and that coil of course is hot and heats the water and then it gets transferred up to the roof again to get pre reheated by the sun and goes back down. That's the most cost effective. In my own home uh, when I put solar water heating on it cost me six dollars and eighteen cents on my second mortgage per month and I saved eighteen dollars and twenty two cents on my utility bill. It's absolutely the most cost effective thing to do. Um, the, uh, the other way solar thermal is used, but that requires um, it integrated into your heating system, is you can transfer that heat uh, into radiators or radiant floor panels to heat your building uh, during the winter. And again, there are cer so certain solar thermal technologies uh, that use heat to glycol or even evacuated tubes where the air is pulled out of the tubes and the tubes get super hot uh, that can go into air conditioners. And we have natural gas air conditioning systems on buildings all over the place. They're called absorption cooling systems. 
and we integrate many different kinds of solar thermal technologies into those systems to zero out natural gas during the day, which is great because that's your biggest drawdown when you're air conditioning, when it's hottest, and that happens to be when the sun's up. So solar thermal uh, is, uh, again, very cost effective. Solar daylighting that I mentioned earlier uh, makes a lot of sense, uh, particularly in uh, one-story buildings, but we have some with uh, daylight tubes that can bring them down to basements or understories to get natural light in these buildings. And again, it's also a productivity and health issue for solar daylighting and cold hard cash in retail. And then uh, solar electricity is predominantly used for places where they have a lot of outages and in, in the Washington metropolitan region, we had uh, a whole week and a half of outages uh, where power lines were knocked down by a storm and businesses and government buildings uh, and uh, hemorrhage in terms of uh, being able to carry out their responsibilities. And of course, these systems are tied to batteries. You put solar panels on the roof or on the ground and next to the building and they charge smart battery banks, 10-year warrantied deep cycle batteries, and you draw upon that for very clean power, no, no surges, no sags, no transients, and also very reliable power. Okay, so does it matter whether I've got a residential building, a commercial building, an industrial building in terms of how I deploy these technologies? And does it matter if I've, with those different types of buildings, who I hire to tell me what I should be doing in the first place. Okay, well first of all, yes. I think uh, the biggest failure of solar technology is not bringing in the right technology experts for the system. There are some companies that are um, most experienced in residential systems, in some cases small business systems, smaller buildings, there are some companies, obviously, that are much bigger roof kinds of companies and deal with the warranties and the engineering issues you face with large roofs. And you also have um, different companies that have experience with different kinds of interfacing with the electric grid. Uh, some cases, uh, many homeowners, for instance, are putting in large solar systems, larger solar systems, where they use some of the power and then, and then sell, basically, their extra power to the utility grid. It just turns their meter, electric meter, backwards. They're really credited for the power. Um, that's called net metering. Uh, the problem with that, of course, is in, some ca in, many ca in all cases, if the grid goes down, you go down as well. And so you have a generator on your roof, and when everybody else is dark, you are dark. So for primarily for commercial, medium-sized commercial and small commercial, you use battery banks so they're operational all the time. So they're cash registers, they're card swipes, they're internet, they're fax machines, in some cases their refrigerators are always working. And, uh, and then in larger buildings, we put in acres of solar panels and again it's used in the building and really sold as a major provider for the utility. Okay, so I'm guessing that the person I hire to put the, to design the solar electricity systems or the solar heating systems and install them are different people than I'm going to be hiring to figure out the passive siting of the building. Yes, um, there are Generically, for passive solar structures, these are architectural firms for the most part. There are some specialty solar firms in certain regions of the country that also have decades of experience in this. Then you have smaller solar firms that are in dealing with the assessment of what kinds of solar water heating or solar photovoltaic systems and, and then help package those systems. And then, of course, you have the larger solar firms that do these uh, multi-hundred kilowatt or multi-megawatt systems that are deployed on big buildings or on the ground. In, any ca in each case, uh, states and regions have solar energy industry association chapters composed of these companies. They have to meet certain standards to join the trade association. So you can uh, go to the national 
www.seia.org website or Google at your local solar chapter or your American Solar Energy Society chapter as well. Uh, but all installers, I don't care what kind of company they are, must be NAPSEP certified. And that the North American Building Contractor Energy Practitioners has a certification program of people who have experience installing both solar water heating, solar electric photovoltaic systems, and even small wind systems on buildings or on sites, and they must have that training. Okay, so one more time, because I think this is the biggest question for someone who's looking at one of these systems, wants to start figuring out solar for their particular building, property, whatever it is. Aside from emailing you at all hours of the day, how do I find someone who's certified to do what I need? There, well, again, I would not pick this acronym if I were setting up an organization, but www.nabcep.org is the place to find out about uh, who has the credentials to install these systems. And even a large solar company or an engineering company come to you and say, we are going to want to do this. You want to get the names of their NABCEP certified installers. Doesn't matter how good the design is, if it's installed incorrectly, it is not going to work optimally. All right. Well, I think that answers a very frequently asked question. So for ICMA and the Stella Group, I'm Mark Newberg. He's Scott Sklar. And we'll be back to answer more frequently asked questions soon. Thank you.